Hi, this is Silver Dave. Do you know how silver is transformed from this to this? What does it cost to take a piece of scrap or ore and make it into a coin? Well, let's find out. As silver stackers, we like silver but we really like finished silver products. Typically, this would be a 3 9th round or coin, but such pure silver is rare in nature. So how do we get from ore or other ma raw materials into a finished silver coin? First of all, you have to understand that silver is mainly a byproduct of copper mining, as it does not occur naturally in its purest form very often. To extract silver and potentially other precious metals, large amounts of ores are crushed into finer uh, particles. The ore dust is then washed or bathed in a dilute cyanide solution to extract the gold and silver that could be in the ore. The solution contained the, the dissolved silver and potentially gold is then separated from the remaining common ore. To separate the precious metal from the solution, this can be done through electropaying or a redox reaction. A redox reaction is a chemical reaction. It involves putting a more reactive metal such as zinc in the solution to displace sil the silver or gold atoms dissolved in the cyanide solution, and then the zinc will bind with the cyanide. Either way, you're going to consume a lot of energy and materials and create a lot of water-based pollutants. The electroblading process might work too. Um, it typically involves creating less pollutants because you don't have a zinc salt uh, solution afterwards, um, and the cyanide can be reused, but it still produces some water wastes. All of these pollutants and chemicals and effort used to extract silver and gold. Uh, in terms of production and cleaning costs, um, it adds up to your price of silver. And I believe I read an article where they stated that current, the current price of extraction for an ounce of silver to just extract the silver is roughly between six to ten dollars an ounce. Once the precious metals are extracted, they are typically melted into bars of mixed concentration. So at this point, we're not separating the precious metals. We're keeping silver and gold together and they are melted at the mine. This alloy is often called doré. The silver and gold mix alloy is sent to an assayer mint who performs an analysis of the precious metal alloy and determines the best method of separating the alloy into its individual pure metal elements. The process is called parting. It can either be chemical, I'll put up the chemical uh, formula, or done through electroplating, so electrolysis. Um, the chemical process which is the more traditional process, involves dissolving the dore that contains silver and gold in nitric acid, and this will create a silver nitrate solution, leaving the gold behind. And the silver nitrate solution is precipitated with copper so that uh, copper binds with the nitric acid and silver is precipitated into a solid in the solution. An alternative is to take this solution and separate the silver from the solution the electrolysis and the silver precipitate will deposit onto a positive cathode. Both of these separation processes, the parting process of separating either chemically or using electricity, has a cost in both terms of energy and pollutants. And usually after this process, we have a pure metal of gold and silver. At this point, the silver has been tested by the assayer. It is melted and poured into a bar. 
This bar is a certified bar that is called a good for delivery bar for metal exchanges. It will usually come with a certificate certifying what date it was tested by the assayer and when was it melted and its uh, content. This finished pure bar is what the spot price of gold and silver is based upon at the metal exchange. To make coins of pure metal, such as a silver eagle, you need to take it a step further. To make a metal coin out of pure silver, the bar is rolled, the silver bar that comes from the assayer is rolled into silver sheets. And from these silver sheets, you cut coin blanks, so round coin blanks, roughly of the shape of this coin. These blanks are sent to another part of the mint to be struck into coins. To mint the coins from the blanks, the first step is you have to make a die. The die is, I'll put a picture of a die up. A die is cut out of a harder material, such as steel. For cheaper dies, for cheaper designs or more rough designs, the die can be usually machine cut out of a CNC machine. But for high quality mintages, this is usually done by hand and by an artisan. The blanks are put into a hydraulic press and the dies are attached onto the hydraulic press. The press drops the die on the blank and puts an enormous pressure on the blank so that the design will be imprinted on the blank. To maintain a certain consistency in quality, the die has to be changed after a few hundred thousand stamps for uh, mass-produced bullion coins. But for small mintage, high-relief coins, typically they are changed much more frequently. Once the coin is stamped, it is usually washed and then packaged and prepared for shipping. So to summarize, the minting process to go, the extraction and minting process to go from ore to coin is that you start off with the rock, you pass it through with some cyanide bath, you precipitate your precious metals out of the cyanide bath, you get a mixture of gold and silver called doré. The doré is sent to an assayage mint, which will try, which will do the parting process of purifying uh, the silver and the gold. Um, I forgot to mention, this type of scrap, when they send it out, they also send these type of scraps to the assayer who can actually melt this and separate the silver from, for example, the copper alloy that's used to strengthen these uh, knife backs that I, that I uh, removed from uh, some silver, sterling silver knives that I bought. Then from the parted metal, they make bars that are certified as good for delivery. From these bars, you create metal sheets and from these sheets, you provide metal blanks that you cut out of the sheets. And using those blanks, um, you send this to another part of the mint, usually, that prepares uh, dies to strike the coins. And once the dies are prepared to strike the coins, you start striking and stamping your coins. And after each, depending on the type and quality of the stamping, for example, if you're making uh, proof coins, you typically, you cannot stamp so many before your die is, uh, cannot guarantee a certain quality. So the die has to be changed ever so often. So new dies need to be made. And once all the coins are made and stamped, you wash them, you prepare uh, them for shipping by packaging and everything else. And the whole process from uh, rock to coin is not the spot price you see on trackers. That, that's for sure. Um, what you see on trackers in the spot price is the price of the finished pure bar at the assayer. That is the spot price. It doesn't include the price for minting the coin that you buy as an investment bullion coin. So to conclude, one should never assume that the physical silver price will be the spot price on the trackers. It will always be slightly higher than the, the spot price. And this is because the rough estimate of making a coin from melted bars 
is around 2 to 10% of spot price. It can vary depending on spot price. And it can also vary depending on the volume of coins. For example, the American Silver Eagle, the cost of manufacturing is much lower than, um, than for example, an Australian Koala, which they only make 300,000 of. Um, the reason is, these coins are mass produced. The dies, you, you can strike a few hundred thousand coins with each die. While for a koala, they're probably striking uh, only a few thousand with each die. So yeah, that's something to think about. I'm only really presenting a simplified picture of how things work in the minting process and the extraction process. There are many other techniques for a different ores and different concentration of ores. This is a general overview of how things go from basically the raw rock or a scrap to your coin. And if you have more details, feel free to contribute and write it in the comments. Um, I think if we share our knowledge, it's good for everybody in the community and it can help uh, everybody out. So feel free to comment and uh, I usually reply within a day or two and I try to reply to everybody. Uh, if you like the content, feel free to sub subscribe, uh, sub, <laughs> you sub, like, and click the bell notification button. Um, and also write what other content you want me to see. Because uh, I made this content because one of my uh, common, uh, one of my subscribers, I believe his name is uh, common, one of my subscribers commented that he wanted to, me to do a video about, you know, how uh, things are made, you know, from uh, the extraction start until you reach a coin and how does that reflect into the price of a coin and uh, so here it is so feel free to let me know what type of content you want to see and what what other things you might be interested in um, it can be more I can do more content on gold if you want me to talk more about financials if you want me to talk more about uh, numismatics I don't have very many numismatic coins uh, I'm not a new, I'm, I have some semi numismatic coins. I would say I do take semi numismatic coins, but I'm very value sensitive. So for me, high numismatic value coins, it's very hard for me to uh, assess them. And uh, my my personal sentiment towards the market is that the market is a minefield. The numismatic market, the vintage, the old, really really old coins, it's. It's a minefield with a very few collectors who are in the know between each other and it's very hard to enter it. So I'm more buying the semi-numismatic stuff that I know they had um, that are old. For example, the old uh, Swiss 20 Swiss franc coin. I think I might buy some old sovereigns. Um, they're not really considered numismatics coin because of the lack of quality, but they're not making more sovereign. They're not making as many sovereigns as before and people are moving more to the Britannias. So they're being discontinued. And I see the fact that they're at spot is, is a pretty good price for them <laughs> considering that they're even cheaper than some of the newer coins or the Krugerrand. So there, that's, that's how I think. Um, yeah, thank you for watching and uh, hope you enjoy the video. Silver Dave out. Mm -hmm.